hello everyone. Just out in the field. Um, I've had a slow morning. I um, got to about quarter to nine and I was dressed and everything. I was just like slowly getting outside and then I thought, oh crap, I've forgotten about the ducks and ducklings. So I came out to let them out. And the Fario was there doing one of the livery's horses. Then we ended up talking about dogs. Um, he's got a GSP. So we see he was making a fuss of Phoebs. Oh, I don't know where she's gone. Phoebs! Oh, there she is. She's down there. Um, so, yeah, we were chatting and he's recently put his dog... His, no, sorry, his bitch to a dog. So anyway, ended up talking. And like half an hour later, I still haven't let the ducks and ducklings out. So anyway, he's just finished. Let the ducks and ducklings out. And now I'm out here. Um, but I read an interesting article about hip dysplasia. And it's basically every single puppy is born with normal hips. And at about a week old, signs of hip dysplasia can start to appear. Um, so then some of it is genetic and environmental but you can still manage a dog with a genetic predisposition to hip dysplasia better so that the damage is less and the genetic factors are different in, from breed to breed so it's not like there's going to be one magic test that can rule it out um so it's a complicated issue to sort was basically what it was saying and it was citing different articles referencing to them and stuff. Um, but it was just quite interesting. And then what it did say was it's a complicated issue, not just because the genetics are complicated, but because environmental factors are complicated. Um, So, environmental factors are weight, exercise, flooring, injury. Um, there's lots of things. Oh, blackberry picking. Of course they are. There's some quite low ones though, so. See, there's really low ones by pumpkin's leg. Um... Too much, then. Two, the good ones there. <laughs> the case are funny. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a very complicated issue. But a good quality diet would mean the ligaments and tendons responsible for kind of holding the joint in place are strong and therefore more capable of keeping the joint where it should be. I think I'll find another one for you now. There you go. Um, so, if they are fed a poor quality diet or too much food, not only do they have the chance of growing too fast, but the extra weight will put extra pressure on the joints. Extra pressure on the joints could lead to hip dysplasia. Um, it's unlikely to be a significant development in genetic testing so that you can just test for the dogs more likely to have it so people have got to manage their dogs better and now the weight thing Nala is overweight Raven is overweight Pumpkin is borderline Duds is a little bit overweight 
I got. But my version of overweight to the pet people's version of overweight is drastically different. So I'm not saying, I'm not being a hypocrite basically. You know, Anala probably's got a kilo to lose and she'd be a different dog. Pumpkin and Raven probably about the same. You don't need to lose because you're growing. Your growing will do that. But even her, it's got a small, small little curve to her waist. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you do need to watch your dog's weight. Then there was the thing about surfaces. So, um, uneven grassy surfaces are very good for your dog's development and hip health. Hill work is good for your dog's hip health. Slippery surfaces, flat surfaces. Flat surfaces don't really gain much benefit to the hips. Um, slippery surfaces can damage them. Oh, there's somebody hiking. She makes me laugh when she stands up. <laughs> Poddy bumped into her tail. Whoa, brum brum! Aria go brum, brum, brum. She was smiling through that. Judith! Judith! So, yeah, I've definitely read a statistic. We get girl, Jude. That dogs have a higher instance of joint disease since laminate and tile flooring became more commonplace in homes. So it's so much easier to clean laminate and tile flooring, but put a runner, put a carpet, reduces the chance your dog is gonna slip. It's, some, it's a simple solution that could save your dog years of pain and suffering. Couldn't it? Yeah. Um, keeping your dogs to a healthy weight. All of my dogs' weight fluctuates, always. They're active, they're more less active. Girls with their hormones. It, it all affects their weight. So, but don't let it fluctuate too much. Take them to walks, different places where you know there's different surfaces. Nala! Uphill, downhill, all good for them. Off lead work, on lead work. Variety is the spice of life, as they say. I think far too many people want fat puppies. And I'm not saying fat as in Phoebe, but fatter than Phoebe. So Phoebe's got plenty of covering over her ribs, over her bones, over her joints, but it's not excessive because she's growing. If they're ill, they've got to, you know, a little bit in reserve if they don't eat, if they lose weight because they're ill, but they got enough in them to grow. And it's a fine balance to find, but it's important. Um, I will try to remember to link you guys to this article that I read. It was a bit more technical than most 
articles I've read on hip dysplasia, but it wasn't the full on studies either. It was a bit in between. So um, yeah, it was an interesting read. Um, and hip scoring won't guarantee offspring not getting it because it depends on the breeders methods of raising puppies it depends on the new owners methods of raising puppies it depends on a lot of things um but hip scoring does at least guarantee that the dysplastic dog isn't being bred from um i like how i've talked for nearly 11 minutes and now they're like we let's have fun um, it's like really drizzly, horrible weather here today, so um, I'll be getting off my bum and doing something now. You know, you've got so much to do, you don't really know where to start, and you don't know, so you don't start anyway, you just like, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit of me today. The dogs are pretty chill today. tired today. So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna leave this here and I shall see you all soon. Bye.